If you're watching this video, it's probably because one of two reasons. First, I'm your instructor and I posted the link to this video on the course website and I said, hey, go watch the video. So if that's the case, thank you. Otherwise, you're probably watching it because you saw the title of this video and you're thinking, how are courses in video games the same thing? For one thing, I like video games and I don't particularly like some of my courses. For another thing, I really just don't see how saving the world is supposed to be like passing your class. It's definitely not quite equal in terms of importance, at least to the game world. Well, as a student, I did the typical, all right, let's go to class, we'll take some notes, let's study for the exam, maybe the night before, maybe a little bit earlier, depending on how much time I had. We'll take the exam and then we'll probably forget absolutely everything we just learned and repeat the process until we're done with the final and then I don't even remember what I learned in that course anymore. But if you take the approach that courses are basically video games, that might actually help you retain the course content better. So you remember it five years down the road when your boss walks up to you and says, hey, you know, I know you took a course in X subject when you were in college. What'd you learn there? Because I think we're going to need it for this particular project. And you go, uh oh, I don't remember anything. So let's figure out how to use video game strategies for courses to make sure that you're successful in the course and you remember what happens in the course after you're already done. We're going to go through this using Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time images because first it's my favorite video game. really love this game. And second, a lot of people know about it. If you don't know about it, a quick Google search will tell you way more than you ever wanted to know about Ocarina of Time. So here you are, you are the main character, you are a hero protagonist, and you are going to save the world, or at least pass your class. Get whatever grade you want to in that class that makes sure that you can get your degree properly. So as you are going and saving the world, you're going to have to go through some dungeons. Those are your course topics that you have to master to be able to get through this game properly. When you beat the dungeon, you're going to get a nice medallion. This is probably some kind of grade or other reward that you get that counts towards your performance in the course. And you get enough of these medallions, then congratulations, you've done all the game content, all the course content, and you can move on, fight that final boss, and finish up the course or the game. To get through those dungeons, you usually get a dungeon map. These are your notes. Sometimes your instructor gives you notes, sometimes you take the notes yourself, but those are what help lead you through the dungeon, navigate those particular course topics to get the info you need to be able to get through the dungeon. With your map comes some items. Sometimes it's items that help you interpret the map, like this compass. Sometimes it's other important info, things you need to move through that dungeon, like keys. So no pun intended, these are key concepts that really help you understand, okay, this is what this course topic's all about. Sometimes you get really special keys and that way you know, all right, I really got to hang on to this key. This is super important. It has a particular use, which we'll get to in a minute. You will also get some equipment. This is your course concepts. So just like this equipment, they all do different things. So for example, you wouldn't use the bow for what the hammer does. It's not going to work very well. Same thing for your course concepts. One concept is going to work really well under certain circumstances, another concept will not. So you have to get and be able to use your equipment to effectively fight the monsters in the dungeon. So any kind of course related questions or problems or anything like that, sometimes you'll have to use your equipment to fight mini bosses. So those are your low stakes assignments, your homework, just small things that count towards your course grade, but not a whole lot. There's also dungeon bosses. So you're going to have to use your equipment to fight those as well. Those are your major exams and projects, stuff that really, really counts towards your grade. After you beat all your dungeons, you clear out all your dungeon bosses, then you get to the final boss, which is the final exam. And yes, this guy looks really scary, and he's got a couple of swords, and he looks like he's just going to take you down in about three seconds, but if you've completed your game properly, you have the items you need, you have the practice you need, then you'll be able to get through that final boss, no problem. Pass the final exam, no problem. 
and be on your way to the next particular game you want to play. But to do that, you have to use your items properly. This means you have to remember your older concepts. You have to be able to use them correctly. So the first dungeon you go through, maybe you get a bow. So you have fun shooting things in that dungeon with your bow because dungeons usually give you the equipment that you need to beat them. And then you move to the next dungeon and you get a hammer and you say, cool, a hammer. And then you spend a whole bunch of time smacking things with your new hammer. You get all excited about that. You move to a third dungeon. You get the long shot. Now you can pull yourself really quickly from here to there so you have lots of fun swinging around with this long shot. But you have to remember that you still might need to use your bow at some point. That first item you got. Because if you forget about that and you might run into an enemy that you can kill very easily with one bow shot, you may be sitting there poking at it with either the hammer or the long shot going, why doesn't it die? It's because you're using the wrong item. You're using the wrong concept. So you have to remember all your old concepts. You have to keep all the items you get and you have to store them properly. So practice good inventory management. This is what your instructors hope your inventory management or your concept collection looks like. Everything is beautifully organized. We can find everything really quickly. We have all kinds of items that we can use in all different circumstances. And so we are basically prepared to do whatever this game is gonna throw at us with an inventory like this. Unfortunately, a lot of students have inventories that look something like this, where they kind of glommed on to one particular concept and they said, that fish, I like that fish. I understand that fish. I'm gonna put it all over my inventory. And so, you yeah, know, two dozen fish and a couple other things, but this really isn't gonna help you beat a dungeon. So you might want to clear out some of that inventory with duplicate items and put in something that is a little bit more useful. And by the way, I'm fully aware that this image is lower resolution and it's in a different language. Um, yeah, there's some parallels there. But bottom line, good inventory management can really help you out. And it's probably idea, a good idea to dump some of those fish and put in some other items so you can get more effective kills on more monsters. And speaking of that, you do have to get and use the right equipment for the dungeon which means you have to learn and apply your concepts correctly. This is the water temple. Pretty much everybody hates the water temple because number one, water physics is a bummer. Number two, there's always that one key that you forget and then you get all the way to the end of the dungeon and yeah, no key, you can't unlock the door, you gotta go all the way back. I've done that at least half a dozen times. Here's the equipment that's gonna help you out in this dungeon. So it'll help you swim underwater, it'll help you kill the enemies, it'll help you move around, it'll help you actually get to that final boss. This equipment on the right, unfortunately, it's nice to have, but it's really not going to help you out in this dungeon. It's useful in other places, but not here. So for example, if you try to throw a boomerang underwater, it's not going to go very far. This is like using the wrong concepts for a particular application. They're nice. They're useful in other places, but they're not gonna help you here. There's also equipment that looks like it might be related and you might be on the right track with this, but unfortunately it's just not as useful as the items you're supposed to use in that dungeon. So this silver scale lets you dive underwater. But if you think about the equipment that you actually need for this dungeon, you have items that let you swim around underwater for as long as you want. And so that means your dive ability really isn't that important anymore if you can just jump in and start swimming. So this is like using a related concept, but that just doesn't fit quite right. It looks like it might be the right thing, but it isn't quite right. So make sure you're using the right equipment for the job. And while you're at it, upgrade your equipment. So practice, practice your concept application. Look at more robust ways to do things. Look at how to do things in more detail because sometimes those upgrades are actually necessary. So that nice shiny mirror shield on the top there, you need that to beat the game. There's no way you're gonna get to the end without it. You just can't do it. Unless you cheat, glitch your way through things, which is technically not how we're supposed to get through the game, so you do actually need that shield. On the other hand, sometimes upgrades are just nice to have. So that gold scale on the top right would replace the silver scale. So you dive a little bit deeper, you don't need it to beat the game, but it's nice to kind of dive down and explore some areas that you couldn't get to if you just had the silver scale. Sometimes it lets you pick up extra stuff and it's good for 
side quests, like extra credits. So if your teacher offers you a side quest, they offer you some extra credit, take it. It's really nice to have some of those upgrades sometimes that lets you have more arrows to shoot things with. If you're a really bad shot like I am, I really like having an arrow upgrade because it means I have more arrows before I have to go get more from the shop or wherever. So these side quests are great for not only getting more stuff, upgrading your equipment, but it also lets you practice with your equipment a little bit more. So like I said, I'm a really bad shot with that bow. Having the side quest that involves bow actually helps me practice with it so I can shoot better. So similarly, if I was weak on a particular concept in a course, I would want to do some side quests or extra credit that involve that so I can get better at it. So that when I'm preparing for the boss, I'm actually ready for that boss. And so this means I am studying properly. I am not cramming the night before. So you know that one room before most bosses in dungeons that's full of health items and magic replenishment and equipment refills? Yeah, that room, especially if you've got a save point, you know the boss is coming. So not only do you need the right equipment for that boss, but you also need to make sure you have enough refillables in that equipment. So for example, you have enough arrows in the bow, you have enough hearts. And so this can actually be real health, or it can just be the number of study sessions. You know, if you only study a couple of times, it's like going in to fight a boss with three hearts. Okay, if you're really good at that game, go for it. You could probably do it with three hearts. You know, if your instructor was going to take the test, your instructor's really good at the game. They're the one that made it. So yeah, they could clear that boss no problem. But if you're a little bit shaky on some of the things, you might want to collect some more hearts, study a couple more times. And if you're still not sure if you got some more hearts, get even more hearts. More hearts never hurts. So even if the boss only does a couple of hearts of damage, you're still well within your safety margin. Your grade's still going to be pretty good. So you're doing okay. Finally, studying sometimes involves grinding. And yeah, I'm fully aware that Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is an action-adventure game. There's no grinding in there. But there is grinding in RPGs like Final Fantasy. So this little black mage guy knows all about grinding or putting in the effort that you need to learn. This is particularly important if you come in and you're not quite ready for the course. So for example, if you were taking my food engineering course and you come in and you go, oh, it's been like three years since I did algebra, I don't know about this. Well then, grind. Get some algebra problems. Go ahead and practice them. Take some Khan Academy lessons, you know, find the resources that you need to brush up those skills. Because if you are underleveled for that boss, I probably don't need to tell you what's going to happen. It's not going to be a fun experience, so go ahead and grind. Put in the effort that you need to learn. Not your classmates, not what your instructor says you should do, but until that you feel you're at the right level to take on those bosses. Especially the final boss. And by the way, this final boss here, that's not your instructor. We're not trying to take you down. This is the final exam, basically, but this isn't us. This is us. We are your somewhat irritating guide. But if you pay attention to your somewhat irritating guide, they're actually telling you to do something that you really need to do to beat the game. So when your instructor is yelling at you, hey, let's go check out that water temple, and you're like, I hate the water temple. I don't want to do the water temple. I'd rather do like 800 side quests first. You probably should head to the water temple. At least, you know, check it out. Maybe put a toe in there. Because you really do need to go through it to beat the game. Unless, again, you're using glitches and that's akin to cheating. Please don't do that. So, remember, your instructor might be a little bit irritating, but we're just trying to help you. And that is how courses are very, very similar to video games. If I miss something, feel free to put it in the comments, discuss what you see here. And the next course you take, try this video game approach. See if it works for you. If it doesn't, cool. If it does, then you found an effective way to learn, and hopefully you'll remember what you learned long after your classmates who may take a different approach forget it.